I'm joined on the set by Deepti Laurent to take a look at the papers today. Hi, Deepti. Hi, Jeannie. Let's start with that visit in Washington yesterday between the Brazilian leader Jair Bolsonaro and Donald Trump. Yeah, that's right. The br bromance of the two pop populist leaders was well and truly on display. Um, they, they exchanged pleasantries. They also swapped football jerseys, a picture of that making the front page of the British Daily, The Independent, the Donald meeting the Trump of the tropics, as Jair Bolsonaro is sometimes known. The men uh, reaffirmed their opposition to socialism, agreed on working together to get rid of Venezuela's Nicolas Maduro. They also signed uh, trade agreements. The New York Times notes that they share a lot in common, actually. Both are, quote, brash nationalists whose populist appeal comes partly from social media, and both have a history of making crude statements against women and minorities. Now, not all the papers, however, see the similarities. Well, the French version of the Huffington Post says that Jad Bolsonaro is actually more dangerous than Donald Trump for several reasons. Unlike Donald Trump, he's ex-military, and he's made no secret of his nostalgia for the brutal military dictatorship that ruled Brazil uh, from 1964 to 1985. Bolsonaro has also been open about wanting to crack down on democratic freedoms and institutions that are critical of his politics, not to mention the reported ties between the Brazilian president and uh, those allegedly behind the death of a Rio city councillor a year ago, Mariel Franco. Uh, it must be said that Brazilians themselves reacted pretty critically to that visit uh, in Washington. On Twitter, the hashtag Bolsonaro embarrasses Brazil was widely shared to uh, share criticism like this cartoon you see here uh, of the White House's welcome mat actually being the flag of Brazil, i.e. Brazil being Washington's doormat. Deep D to Japan now. We're one year before the Olympics in Tokyo kick off. The Olympic Committee in Japan is embroiled in a bribery scandal. Yeah, this is what the Japanese press are explaining. It's actually unlikely to affect the actual preparations of the Games, but it's definitely not a good look. Tsunekazu Takeda, he's the chief of Japan's Olympic Committee. He'll be stepping down at the end of his term in June and resigning from the IOC. Uh, he says it's got nothing to do with a bribery scandal. Uh, French authorities have been investigating him over vote-buying allegations. So the Tokyo Games bid committee paid 2.8 million Singaporean dollars to a Singaporean consultancy firm, and French investigators suspect that part of this money actually went to the family of a powerful Senegalese IOC member before Tokyo won the bid for the 2020 Games. Uh, Takeda saying his resignation has nothing to do with that. We'll talk about math now, something we don't do that often yeah, on France 24. <laughs> and a woman has won the Abel Prize, which is the Nobel Prize of mathematics for the first time in history. Yeah, and her story is pretty incredible because she had trouble finding a job uh, in uh, in university uh, as a mathematics professor because she was told uh, that her place was in the home and she should be having babies. Well, who's having the last laugh now? She's gone on to win uh, the Abel Prize. It's you know widely known as the Nobel Prize for math. Her body of work includes analyzing the minimal surfaces of soap bubbles, contributions to string theory, partial differential equations, and the calculus of variations, things you're very familiar with, I'm sure, Jeannie. Of course. <laughs> uh, she's also consistently pushed for more women in the field, which is great. She even created a program encouraging women to enter the profession and famously said that she gets bored with anything she understands. Hmm. All right, let's come back now to France, where rugby officials are tackling the issue of tackles. That's right. The French Rugby Federation and world rugby officials met in Paris uh, on Tuesday in a bid to discuss a really serious issue in the sport, the dangers of tackling uh, just players' physical and mental health. They've actually decided to trial in French amateur rugby two things, outlawing high tackles, so above the neck, um, and prohibiting uh, two men on one-man tackles, uh, with the hopes of taking this maybe to the professional level eventually, because it comes after a handful of young rugby players have died uh, in just under a year uh, due to injuries related to the sport. Uh, we'll wrap up now with a little bit of history, Dipti. A new study shows a link between the history of humanity and the temperature of our homes. Yeah, this is a really cool study. Um, apparently, we like our homes to feel distinctly sub-Saharan, according to the study of temperature and humidity in homes across North America. I don't know how you like your home, Jeannie, but in the winter, um, the Americans surveyed in the study say they like their uh, homes at a temperature of around 8 to 22 degrees Celsius. In the summer, the ideal temperature is 22 to 30 
36 degrees. And scientists actually found this most reflects one climate. It's uh, the climate of Baringo County in Kenya, which is in the Rift Valley, which, by the by, is a birthplace of mankind. So they think it's actually not a coincidence. It turns out we're unknowingly and instinctively recreating the climate of our forebears. Unless you're in my household where my husband's always turning the thermostat down. I'm turning <laughs> it up. It's the war over the thermostat. He's British. They like cold. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that look at the papers today. Thanks to you for watching. Don't forget, you can get a closer look at this and all of our stories we're covering throughout the day on our website, that address, france24.com.